Hi, to begin with, this video is time stamped, so you can jump ahead to a specific mix if you're interested in skipping this introduction. Hi, this is my first Ethos setup video in a while, which I believe is well overdue. Today I will cover how to use logic switches for advanced trimming functions for precision flying. I will cover specifics regarding snap, spin, and stall turn conditions, along with downline mixing. This will be all, all be based on the use of multiple logic switches. I will start with a brief explanation of how we'll be using the logic switches and their basic functionality. So if we have our model here, I have actually pre-programmed a lot of this because I believe that it will make for a much clearer and faster video for me to show you what's going on with the mixers rather than sit there entering the data. So effectively what we're doing with the logic switch is we're creating a switch that works the same as any of these other switches. We're creating something that can be either active, inactive, or active for a certain period of time. Now where this comes in handy is there might be a scenario where, an example of the downline mix, if I'm flying my iMac plane, the only time I'm going to be at idle with no elevator input is going to be basically when I'm doing a downline. And in the case of my planes, they pitch ever so slightly towards the canopy. So I have a logic switch condition, which means that when I'm at idle and my elevator is neutral, that switch is triggered, setting a slight offset to the elevator, in my case about 2%. So these kind of things are incredibly useful uh, to reduce the workload because none of the iMac planes fly totally perfect, uh, F3A, well, they do fly pretty perfect, so I'm sure they need a lot less mixing, but I'm sure that a lot of this applies to them. So in order to demonstrate, I've got a simple setup here, which involves five servos. As quiet as these servos are, they will be a bit annoying in the video, so I'm going to try and remember to turn them off. But basically, I've got, we've got our elevator servos there, our aileron servos there, and our rudder servo there. So to give you the idea of the concept, it helps to visualize what we're actually doing here. So to begin, I'm going to, work, I'm going to show you how I've done the downline logic switch. So we're going to go into the model page, we're going to go across, we're going to go to our logic switches. Now, you can see I have a lot of logic switches here already. Just going to zoom that in slightly. I hope the focus is okay there on that. That should do. I'll zoom back out in a sec. Um, so in our case, logic switch 1, 2, and 3 are relating to this downline mix. So we'll see the way logic switches will be disabled when we move the input. So um, gimbal's not cooperating. So if I bring the throttle up, we can see that logic switch 2, the switch is turned off, and logic switch 3, which is an AND function of logic switch 1 and 2, is also turned off. Likewise, if I apply elevator input, logic switch 1 is off, therefore disabling logic switch 3. So now the first step of this is going to be to look at the individual logic switches. So we're going to start with the elevator. So we're going to see that in the case where we want to have it applied towards the center of movement, we can have the A between two lines. I'm afraid I'm not quite familiar with the uh, terminology and that's going to be less than X. So in our case, the source is the elevator, A, and the value, in this case, 1% is enough. You'll see that like you can just lean on the stick ever so slightly and we can see it disable and enable. I've already forgotten to turn the servos off when we're not on. So this will be an always on condition and we don't need any delays in this. So we've established that first switch. So now our second switch is going to be throttle related because we want this only to be active at idle. We don't want at half throttle when you're going along your baseline, you don't want this applied. So in this case, we're using just a simple A is less than X symbol. So A is less than X. The source is throttle. And the value, I like to do 98%. So if you're not quite on the stop, it's going to engage. Once again, this is going to be an always on condition and there are no delays needed. 
So it makes sense now that we're at the point where we have two logic switches that we need to be triggered simultaneously to trigger the logic switch which is actually going to apply the mix that we want. So then we come to our logic switch 3 which is an AND condition. So the AND condition is quite simple. We're going to we're going to normal direction, we're going to function, we're going to AND value 1, logic switch 1, which was our elevator position, and logic switch 2, which was our throttle position. And we can see, it's a bit hard maybe in the video, but you can see as it moves the throttle, logic switch 2 engages and disengages, and we can see logic switch 3 engage and disengage. Again, I don't put my timer here. Um, and I put the timer on the mix page because I like to actually do a, do a bit of a slow function on this mix. As small as the mix is, I like it to come in very slowly. But you can definitely apply a delay before inactive or a delay before active if you like, just so it has a bit of a pause and a minimum duration. So now we know our logic switch 3 is the thing which is going to trigger when we're in this condition we want to be in. And I've just realized we've got to go back to that logic switch because in my case, my sequence rate is this up high. I have basically the other two rates, just my high rates, which is effectively a spin rate and landing rate. Um, so what I want to do is I want to click on this active condition and I want to set it to the switch position for the sequence rate because I don't want this logic switch to come on on landing approach. It's not a significant enough mix that it would cause you a problem on landing approach, having said that. But with that in mind, I don't need it there. I don't want it there. So it's only going to come on. It's only going to be active when that switch is in that position. So now we have our switch, our logic switch 3, which is going to do what we want. It's time to go back and we want to go to our mixer. And in this case, we're just basically offsetting a channel slightly. So I've made a free mix up here. So to make that, we would just simply press the plus button and free mix up the top corner there. But this is already made. So we're going to go into this free mix. I'm going to edit. Now, the key part is, is this active condition. Because if we want it to be active with a stick movement or a switch position, we would do this. In this case, we're using that logic switch to make it active. So we're going to go logic switch and logic switch 3. And this is great because what we'll see here is we'll see it go active and inactive as we go out of that condition. Source, we don't need a source for this. It's quite key. The source is already set up on the elevator. This is not the elevator mix. This is an additional mix. So the function type, we want to add. It's very clear that we want to add something to our elevator input. We don't want to replace our elevator input. We don't need a curve for this. We just need to look at our offset. So basically we're just moving that line up and down. So if we go zoom back out, we can see what's happening here. So if I turn these servos on, see up, down, and we can see that if I bring the throttle back to idle and go into the condition, those servos are moving how I want them to. So they're giving me a little bit of down elevator or a little bit of up. I've exaggerated this. This mix is usually about 2% at most, but for the sake of visuals, I wanted these to move a bit more than 2%. The other part I like to do here is I'm going to leave them on for a sec because I actually like to put a slow function on them because I don't like this mix to just come on real fast and like potentially show a change of attitude so three seconds or so could be more could be less you just want it to ease on over a second or two so I'll turn this back off now so now we have to this would be by default one channel we need it to be two because this is a model with two elevator channel two elevator uh, servos so we're going to scroll back down I'm going to zoom back in a bit, so I'm going to have to keep remembering to do that. And we're going to output, select elevator 1, output 2, select elevator 2. And we can invert these if we need. So in case you have the case of one elevator is going up and one's going down, we can reverse one of those two channels to achieve what you're after. Ultimately, if they're both going in the correct direction that you want, 
you should just be using this offset to get them going in the right way. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next logics which we're going to look at, which is going to be our snap condition. Now, the snap condition can be... Sometimes people will have one condition that they will use for everything. So if the positive or negative activates, that's fine. They're happy to do that. Others will go to what I do, which is a negative condition and a positive condition. And others will have their condition activate with the cornering of the stick. So they'll have like a, a right negative um, condition, left negative condition, right positive condition, left positive condition. So we're going to look at basically how I do it, which involves a simple bit of um, the throttle position as well as the elevator. So we're looking at logic switch 4 to logic switch 8. In this case we're going to have a elevator for our negative snap which is logic switch 4 which is going to be activated and logic switch 7 which is going to be activated by positive. So we'll see that logic switch 6 is a combina is an and sum of logic switch 4 and 5 and logic switch 8 is a logic switch combination of 5 and 7 because we can use that number five logic switch in multiple places. You can use that in as many and sums as you want. It doesn't bother the system. So we're basically going to have a quick look at how I do my my negative condition. So my negative condition is an A is greater than X source is elevator and the value is going to be 95%. So if, as soon as I get to basically 95% it's going to give me that. In this case of the snap conditions, I like to just have them set by a certain amount of time. So they just stay on for two seconds, which is long enough. At the stage I'm at, I don't have the uh, real issue where I'm sort of fighting, um, you know, a positive to negative snap. That doesn't come up in the intermediate sequence, but as you become more advanced and that becomes a thing, you can definitely do it in a way that um, it will hold for a shorter period of time to allow that change. So when we look at what we have, we have our logic switch 6 for our negative. So we want to change the rate on the mixer page based on logic switch 6. So in this case, we're going to actually go to the mixer page. And we're just going to do a quite simple look at, let's say, the elevator. So weight and rates, in this case, we have our default. And let's say for our snap condition, we would like to have 40% elevator. That gives us enough pop for our iMac um, entry. And then we look at what condition enables it. And this is where we can start having that logic switch come in. So in this case, we're looking at logic switch 6, which is the AND sum. And if we've done it right, we can see our logic switch 6 engage for a certain period of time. And then we want to also look at our positive snap condition, which was logic switch 8. So now we can go to logic switch 8. So in this case, let's say, to make it clear, we want 60%. And there goes our logic switch. And there it switches between the two. So the nature of this is, is that there is a priority system. The highest active logic switch is the one that will be engaged. So we want to make sure if we set our rates to something here, we want our rates to be below our logic switches because we want our logic switches to override our rates. If our rate position is above our logic switch positions there, the rate will overrule it, and even though the logic switch becomes active, it won't have its effect. So we naturally do this for all the channels we'd like to do. Elevator, aileron, throttle, rudder. Some people will even uh, make this affect the throttle, giving it a little blip when it's enabled. 
I personally do not agree with this from a safety perspective, but I don't begrudge anyone else for doing it. I, I believe that if you have the proper processes in place, this is fine. But I, I really prefer to not have anything that will that will attempt, potentially cause a unplanned throttle up condition. I won't cover how to do this because I think it's pretty clear. It's, a, it's effectively the same way as our downline mix. Now for our final logic switch, which is a very simple one, we're simply going to make it so that, in my case, I don't like having to flick a switch to go from my sequence rate to a rate that gives me enough rudder for a good stall turn. So I effectively just have a condition that puts it into high rates just for the rudder. So if we're looking at this, we're going to look at our logic switch 9 here. So in this one, because we want it to apply in both directions, we want a the uh, line symbol A line greater than X. The source we want is rudder. And value X, I'm happy with 95%. I want it to just come on when it's right near their stop. I'm never going to get that close to the stop doing normal sequence stuff outside of my stall turn. The active condition is going to be my sequence rates. So whatever your sequence rate is, is what you'll set that to. And so now we have a logic switch that comes on if we're in our sequence rate. Won't come in unless we're in our sequence rate. And when we're right at the end. So now what we need to do is we need to go to our mixer page and we need to change our rudder. So we need to add a rudder mix that's going to apply based on that logic switch. Whoops, I'm getting a bit lost here. I'm going to edit that mix and we're going to add a new weight. The active condition is going to be lo the logic switch we just made, logic switch 9, and let's say 100% for the sake of the argument. So if we look at our rudder movement, we can see that, and we see our curve there, you can see that as we're applying rudder, once we get right to the end, it puts us into that full rate logic switch. Now this could be done as a custom curve if you wanted. You could do a custom exponential curve with a really sharp rise at the end. And that would achieve effectively the same thing, but this is how I personally like to do it. I find it does everything I need for when you need just that little bit extra pop at the top of a knife edge to get it over. Uh, at the end of, end of a stall turn to get it over. I'm going to turn this back off. I'm realising now that I haven't used the servos as much as I thought to demonstrate it, but... I feel like if people would like me to, I can do another video elaborating on this, but I feel like the concept is mostly covered. Well, I know there'll be comments from people, why don't you just fly the plane? I'll bet that most of these people can't get above 50% at an iMac comp flying basic on a perfect day. All that we are doing is more advanced trimming steps to get our models flying as close to perfect as possible. Now this is something every pro, F3A, iMac, Freestyle, Pilot, all the glider guys have endless mixes and conditions to figure out how to make the plane fly what they were like. Ultimately I'm aware that there's many ways to do these things. I've covered these mixes and conditions in the way that I do them. I've come up with my ways of doing this in relative isolation and I'm quite aware that there are going to be better ways to do these things and I'm sure people watching this video will come to conclusions about better ways to do these things and I'm more than happy to learn from that. I'm always happy to learn. But anyway, I hope, it, I hope this video has been useful. It's going down this path setup wise has improved my iMac flying immensely. The use of logic switches for my snap conditions has reduced my workload. It's hard to imagine working without downline mixes. It's only 2%, but if it, if your plane's just pitching that ever so slightly, it's, it's just so much better having the mix there to take that out. Anyway, um, if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover or any other conditions or ideas that you think you'd like me to explain, I'd be more than happy to do that. If you've watched the whole way through, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you.